Hi. This session will be about creating a simple slideshow that we can import into Dreamweaver using Adobe Flash. It's, um, it's a very straightforward operation um, and I'd like to walk you through. So the first thing we need to do is open up Adobe Flash. Prior to that, you do need to have downloaded three images. Um, three images for, for this particular project, you need three images of a size of 1000 pixels wide and 350 pixels high. I've already done that, so if I go into, um, no not there, if I go into my files, you will see in my downloads, I have those three files there. So there they are, one, two, three. And just a reminder to you all that you do need to use um, images that are not copyrightable. So the first thing you need to do is in Adobe, make sure you're in Adobe Flash, go to Action Script 3.0 and open up the canvas, open up the um, stage. Next thing is you need to save it. So file, save as. I'm going to call this um, Room Slideshow because this is, a this is a continuation for things we're creating for the world of music. Um, make sure it's in the right place. I'm leaving mine in my documents and click save. It's telling me one was made before. Simply replace if you have that same problem. So that's the slideshow is now ready. If I go back into properties, you can leave it as the flash by action, action script three. Um, we don't want it to, to be too high quality or too fast. So we're going to use 12 frames per second. The size, as I mentioned before, is 1,000 um, wide by um, 350 high. So we basically want it to fit the entire screen. So change the size in these two areas. So this is the length, this is the width. Now this little icon here centers your stage. So it brings everything into the center of your vision. So that's the first stage. The next stage is to pull in the images that you want to use. So I've already downloaded them, so I actually need to pull them into the library, pull them into this library so that they are ready for use. You do that by going to File and Import. Now you don't import to the stage because we're using them for at different stages, so it's best to import them into the library. Import to Library. And then you select your images. Now, if you press the command key on, on Apple or Mac and the control key on Windows, you can select multiple images and bring them, bring all your images in at once. So I've got three images that I'm going to use. I press the command key and select all three, and then I can bring them into the library, all three at once. Now, I bet you're wondering where they are. As I said, I'm importing them into the library. So click the library area here, and here you will see my three pictures waiting to be used, one, two, three. Okay, now the next stage is to start using the images. So you note down here, this is layer one, and we're gonna rename that to slide one, because that's gonna be for our first slide, and just press enter. This is on frame one, which is the right place for it to be. Again, you can recenter your stage simply by clicking this little button here. This first image, just simply drag it onto the stage. Don't worry about it being aligned. Don't. We're going to do that with the alignment tool. The alignment tool is here. So our image needs to be nicely arranged, and the best thing to do for that is click the alignment tool and make sure it says align to stage. This white area is your stage. So you want the image to be aligned to the stage. So click align to stage. And then you need to align it horizontally centered on the stage. So that's one, you notice it's moved so that it's now horizontally centered on the stage. And then you want to also vertically center it. And wham bang, because the images were um, downloaded at, with the right size, they, they fit nicely into the stage area. So again, I'll just repeat that. Ensure that you align to stage, then click align horizontal center and align vertical center. Um, and then you can close this. So there's your first image. Now before we can use the image, because Flash doesn't like images, it actually likes things to be either a movie clip, a button or something. It will not work with just an image. So we have to change this image into a symbol and a movie clip. So you go to click the image, click modify, and the first one you need is convert to symbol. 
Now you can do it this way or you can press F8. So click convert to symbol and it brings up the convert to symbol box. And the first one is you call the name image one because it's the first image. And make sure here it's not a graphic, it's not a button, it's a movie clip. You can also leave the registration position as is. We don't need to get involved in that at this stage and click OK. Now you'll notice in your library a new image one appears, which is whereby this image has been changed from an image to a movie clip. So what that means is if I click this image and go to properties, it now has a lot more things that we can do with it. We can change the color, we can do something with the position and view, we can um, deal with accessibility features and add descriptions so that if the image, if someone who can't see, can't see the image, we could describe it. So that's the beauty of that. So this is, and you'll notice that it has this bar, this um, kind of cross handlebar in the top left hand corner of the screen. Now that the image is now ready to be used, we now start. So the first thing is there's a keyframe there, so the image will appear there. And we want this image to stay on, to appear for 12, for two seconds. Now, if you remember when we started here, we said there are 12 frames per second. So if we wanted this to stay for two seconds, it means that there'll have to be 24 frames. So what we're going to do is click on, click on a longer timeline here. We're going to click on the 24 frame because it has to be 24 frames for it to stay. And we're going to insert a keyframe, which basically is um, in, from here to here, we're inserting this object so that it appears all through this period of time. So this image will stay on, on, the, on the stage for two seconds, which goes through 24 frames. So that's the first thing. Now, the second thing that we want to do with this image is when it reaches the end of that, for half a second, we want it to fade out so that the next image can fade in. So if we say for six seconds, we want it to fade out, what we now need to do is 24 plus 6 is 30. So we need to insert another keyframe at 30 so that between the 24 and the 30, the image should fade out. Now, if we move this bar just to see what's happening, you'll see that as we move, there's no change. It's all the same. So what we want from this point to this point, we want it to fade. And there's a way to do that once the image has been changed into a symbol which is a movie clip. So if we go back to 24, click on the image, you notice there's this blue border around the image, and the properties now shows everything in relation to the image. You notice image one here. You go into the color, so it may be collapsed like that, all you need to do is click the triangle and it turns to pointing down and reveals its content. So in the style, click alpha. Now the alpha is at naught, so the image cannot be seen. So at this point, we at this point 24, we want the image to have 100% so that it can be seen. But by the time it reaches 30, we want it to have faded away. So again, click on 30, click on the image, don't forget to click on the image, go into the color effect and select the style alpha. Now this time, by this time, we want the alpha to be zero so that the image has faded away completely. So what we should get now, if we run through from one to 30, is the image stays on for two seconds, which is 24 frames. After 24 frames, it now stays on and then it disappears. Now that's not really a fade away, it's a disappearance. So between 24 and 30, we need to gradually create an effect that gradually fades it away. And the way to do that is to click between anywhere between 24 and 30, click on one of the frames, right click and, and click on create classic tween. Now what that does is it now creates a more gradu graduated, um, a more graduated um, fade out. So if I click it, you will see this arrow pointing in that direction. So now if I run through, more it stays on the stage for two seconds after two seconds it now begins to gradually fade away and that's exactly the effect that we want before we introduce the next image so we've happily gotten to this stage 
and we now want to, to, to start introducing the next image. So what we need to do first of all is lock this one, so no changes can occur to it. And we now need to add a new layer. So here we're going to add a new layer, this little button here. Add a new layer. It appears on top of the previous layer. We're going to double click it and name it Slide 2. Press Enter. And then we're going to start from this point here. Because we want, no, we're going to start from this point here, 24, where the fade out where the fade out begins, we want to start introducing a new image. So at this point, we want to introduce a new insert a keyframe. That's where we're inserting our keyframe. Now at this point, we want to introduce the new image. So we've we've right clicked and introduced a keyframe there. We're going to library and we're going to click on the second image. This is the first one. Now we're going to introduce the second image. Now what we're going to do is uh, pull that pull that image onto the stage there you go and again you're going to align the image like we did before so you've got your align tool make sure align to stage is on you want to center it vertic center it horizontally and center it vertically so it fits on like that and then you want to also um, have it fade in this one is fading out you want this one to fade in so again at Frame 30, you're going to click and insert, oh, hold on one second, before you do that, go back to frame 24 where you first introduce it. You don't forget to turn the image into a symbol and a movie clip. So again, click on frame 24, click on the image, go to properties and, um, sorry, go to modify and convert to symbol. Now this is now an image two. Make sure it's a movie clip, not a button, not a graphic, but a movie clip. Registration position is fine and click OK. So now you can see instantly the properties change. This is now image 2 and it has properties that we can play with. The particular one we're interested in at this point, again, is the alpha. Now the alpha is 0 at that point, which is correct, because we don't want it to appear. We want it to gradually fade in. We, so that's that image is ready. We now click on frame 30 and insert a keyframe. And then you need to also go, make sure you click on the image. Don't forget to click on the image, even though you can't see it. Don't forget to click on the image. And then go into style, color effect again, and style. And the alpha, again, you want to make sure it's selected, but this time you want it to fade into 100%. You notice the image appears. So once you've set those two key points at 24 and 30, you now right click on any frame within 24 and 30, right click and create a classic tween. So what you should see now is at, 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 the, at the point of entering 24, the first image is showing now, if I move along there, you'll see the first image is fading out and the second image is fading in. And there you go. So your second image is now in. You now want to, the second image to set, stay on the say, stage for two seconds. Two seconds is 24 frames as we calculated before. So from 30 plus 24 is going to take it to 54. So at 54, you click on frame 54 right click and insert a, a keyframe so that the image the second image will stay on the stage for two seconds before it too uh, will, will begin to fade away over a six second period so 54 plus 6 will now take it to 60 so that's 55 56 57 58 59 60 so 60 at 60, click on frame 60 and insert another keyframe. Now again, what we did here is what we're going to do here, but in the opposite direction. So on frame, frame 54, click on the image. Make sure you go into color effects. The alpha is 100%. That's correct. We leave it there. We want it to fade out to 100%, to 0%, so that the next image can be introduced. So click on frame 60, 
Click on the image. The alpha here is 100%. Take it all the way down to zero so that it doesn't appear anymore. And then again, click between any on any frame between 54 and 60. You can insert, you, this time you can go to insert because there's another way to insert a keyframe. You can go to insert. No, sorry, not insert. Yes. Okay, you can go to insert. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. You right click, and what you want to do is create a classic tween. So again, you've got a classic tween. So when I move from here to here, that image begins to fade out in preparation for the third image. So that looks pretty good so far. So now, again, you need to lock that layer in preparation for introducing the third image. So go back down here and add a new layer, layer three. Again, it appears on top of all the other layers. Double click the name and rename it slide three. Enter. You're starting at this point. You're starting at this point. So at this point, we want to introduce a keyframe. So insert keyframe. It's introduced there. That's another way to get keyframe. And again, at this point, don't you can center the image, just click it to bring it back into center view. And now what you need to do is go back into the library. We've done the first image, we've done the second image, we're now going to introduce the third image. Click on the third image and drag it onto the, onto the desktop, onto the stage. Again, you can align it, make sure align to stage, align it, center it horizontally, center it vertically to the stage. Wow, done. Make sure that at this point, the alpha, you, do, you don't forget, right, close the property box here. Your next move is to change this image to a symbol or a movie clip. Do not forget, otherwise things go awry. So click on the image, go to modify, and convert to symbol. This is now image three. Make sure again, it's not, it's not a graphic, it's not a button, it's a movie clip. The registration is fine and click OK. That means we can now actually do all the things that we need to do on it. So again, Click on that frame, click on the image and go into properties. Now at this point, we want the image to go to start fading in. So it's going from zero to a hundred, it's appearing. So go into the alpha. The alpha at that point should be zero, which it is. That's correct. So you find there. Go to frame 60, click on it, insert a keyframe. And at this point, click on the image, even though it's blank. Go into the alpha and change the alpha from 0 to 100. So there the image fades in. Right, so here, what, if we check it, as the second image fades out, the third image fades in. Beautiful. Perfect. Again, we want the second image to appear on the stage for two seconds. And we realize that that's 24 frames. So 60 plus 24 takes us to 84. Click on frame 84. Insert a keyframe. It stays on the stage for for um for um, two seconds before it too begins to fade out. So at that point, for after six seconds, we want it to fade out. So eighty four plus six is ninety. So click on frame ninety and insert a keyframe. And again, you work on your fade out here. So the image should go from an alpha of 100 to an alpha of 0. Click on frame 84. Click on the image and make take down the alpha. The alpha is on 100. That's fine. On frame 90, click on the image. Take the alpha down to 0. So it fades out. Click between the two. Right click and then create a classic tween. So our movie is more or less ready. But let's save it and try it out. Let's save that. Save it. Click on Control. Go down to Test Movie in Flash Professional and have a look at it. So there you go. The transitions are working nicely. The only thing is between the last and the first one, it's not smooth. And we need to just correct that. So let's correct that. 
Now, we've locked the first and the second. We need to introduce a fade-in of the first at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to lock the third one and unlock the first one. We can, by unlocking it, it means we can work on it. So that's what we need to do. So at this point, you notice there's nothing here. So the first image will not appear at all. And just to prove that to you, if I move across, the first image only starts appearing there. It won't appear at all. So at this point, we now want to introduce... We want to click on that um, 84 and insert a keyframe. So it will start to appear there. Now, yeah, so it doesn't appear, it just from this point is where it starts to appear. So at this point, we also want to click 90 because as the third image fades out, we want it to naturally fade in the first image. So again, click and insert a keyframe there. So what you'll find is here, between here and here, Right, so what we need to do is click on this one, which is the third first image. And first image is, is not showing, but just click on here and then change the alpha, which is under color effects, to 100. Uh, uh, no, it should be zero actually. Sorry, take it back to zero. Click on the last one, click on the symbol, and take the alpha to 100. And there you go. The first image now appears. Click Save It. And then let's try and check what it looks like. The transition between the last and the first should look much more naturally now. So that's cool. That's cool. And from there to there, much smoother transition. And that's basically a very effective but simple slider that you can introduce, you can export and import it into your website or into whatever um, media object you're, you're producing. So what I'd like you to do is try this out um, to see how far you get. If you have any problems, do not fail to contact me. Thank you.